I'm Nancy Green with Film Critique. Um, and I just want to say, first of all, I really enjoyed this movie. And um, I feel like the topic is so important. Um, two things that I really noticed in this. Uh, one, she felt like a superhero to me, almost. Um, with her outfit when she was training and, and boxing and everything. And also um, the second thing that I found actually very sad is that in her being a superhero, she seemed to have to do a lot of this alone. Um, and I, so I noticed the lack of community. Um, her mother turned her back on her. Um, there weren't very many people to help her in this. And it didn't seem like this was, um, these missing children and women were a big concern to anyone else. So I wanted to know if you could speak a bit on that and how that brings um, these issues to the forefront. Well, kind of going back to what I said of the lack of resources and um, kind of, you know, just because we have sovereign nations who are sovereign and have their own governing bodies and what, whatnot, um, it's like a double-edged sword where there's, okay, you have your own governing body, you have your own police, so we don't want anything to do with you. Um, as far as the the children and not that being so much attention on it again or not doing anything about it is because we don't have any resources in those really big hot spot areas of reservations for example the navajo reservation is about the size of rhode island there's maybe 25 26 police on that entire reservation so you know when you have a lot of things going on some things take priority over other things and then you get the assumption from outside governing bodies that put in their head oh they probably wanted to be taken no one really cares oh they probably come from a drunk family or all this, these all, all these this there's a list of different stereotypes that go with being on a reservation or being from an Indian nation native nation um where it gets kind of shunned aside and these reservations there's some that are thriving there's most that aren't there's most that don't even have the simple resource such as running water let alone a police that's going to care about them going missing and you can get really sensitive topic but you can get into jurisdiction where if a non-native commits a crime on native land native police can't arrest them they can't prosecute them so then why is the state of the government the federal government going to take responsibility for this they put it in a file it gets dusty and no one and everybody forgets about it especially up in canada i've learned that a lot of families will try to um, record their missing loved ones as white or even Latino, anything other than native for hopes that maybe they'll get looked for when they put native, they just don't care because it happens so much, which is so bass backwards, you know what I mean? So um, yeah, it's just, it's one of those things where it's this, this movie was necessary on so many different levels. Um, so it, it's one of the, and it's also, you know, I keep saying, you know, the platform film is just storytelling. So this is just bringing some kind of awareness to it. If we all admit there's a problem, because it's a big problem, if we make it a big problem, it will be a big problem. It took one white girl in America to go missing. And I feel for her family. But it's a little tough for me to feel that I get alerts on my phone all day, every day about another native elder, about another missing girl, missing boy, a missing black boy, a missing black girl, native anything. And I don't see the same attention being brought to it. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's when that becomes a real, real problem. But they want our resources. They want our sacred lands. They want our fruitful lands. They want our ceremonies. They want our clothes. They want our costumes. They want to be partaking the things that we believe in, but they don't want to respect the people and the spirit that it comes from. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for that. Hi again. Um, one thing that I, I noticed with the movie and I found this, um, it was it was actually for for him having no lines and and um, how little time he was in the movie. Um, I found it very disheartening to see the Native American man helping the, the human trafficker. And so um, this is a conversation in a lot of communities of people of color, how um, men of color don't always support um, the women in their communities, which leaves them vulnerable to these kinds of things. So I wanted to know if you could um, touch upon that a bit and also why that was included in the movie as well. I'm so glad you asked that question because no one has yet. And that was a huge piece of the puzzle. And we, we did that on purpose 
number one being um just like with any race it's a uh, shame you know sh how if you're ashamed and you're self-hating your own race a lot of times people will sub subconsciously not even consciously be on the enemy's side almost and feel more accepted if they help against their own race because they hate themselves so much and that's a common theme in the native community in any community i think um there's people of every every race that self-hate but especially if you're coming from a race that has so much genetic genocide in from the men and women's side it's just a genetic genetics don't really have you know we all feel that um there's a lot of different stories and different feelings amongst um, Native men and women that self-hate because the world hates us so much. So they just kind of go along with that narrative. So we want to use that little, we dropped that little pin to see if anybody caught it because um, he felt needed by this. And this white person saw that in him, very smart to see that this person really hates himself. So if I hate, these people and he hates himself he's going to do whatever i ask him to do to get against the very people that he hates which is the person he looks like looks at in the mirror and also as far as the men um in our communities that is a huge huge theme with us is that the men need to step up in these communities and support the women because as far as i've always been taught especially my family bloodline our women run things our women are matriarchs our women are sachems to chiefs we're clan mothers we run the community the sachem or chief of a nation of a tribe or a clan may it be a man but the decision makers are the women and we always have been as far as i'm taught the northeast woodland tribes it might be different all over the place but where i'm from from wampanoag nation oh women run things you know it doesn't if we're not feeling it that doesn't happen the men always support us they stand they stand behind us at times to support us to make the decisions they're the muscle we're the mouthpiece and the decision makers so i believe um, our men making this a big deal. Our women can scream until we're blue and red in the face. But once we start seeing men behind us in these marches, in these talks, in these on these tables, in these conferences, it's much more power by them just being there and being a support. You don't have to physically do or say anything. But when we know as women that we got the support of a strong man, even just there, if you see a group of women, but you see a couple of men warriors behind them, you're like, ah, you know what? I ain't even mess with them. You know what I mean? So I just think men bringing their presence um, and standing with women um, in every aspect and every issue is so, so powerful. Silence and just standing there is so powerful. Hence the reason when I do come out with my fights, I have men and women with me. Women go first. But I have my our men and I have men asking me, warriors asking me, can we please walk you out because we support you, sister? And that is so, so powerful. You don't physically have to do anything. Just be there for us. Yes. Yes. And that is so important. And this was a very powerful film. I, I enjoyed it so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I and I also I love the blending of this kind of film that is is kind of like, you know, a mainstream action film with this very important message. So I thought that that was important as well. So thank mm -hmm. you. I mean, and just kind of to add something to that too, the, I didn't even say it, but the fact that my character had to kill her own kind, like she's trying to get accepted from these people and now she has to kill. And that was the first time she ever killed. And it was one of her own to do it. She was willing to do that to even find her sister. So that was just really a, a key thing that we wanted to kind of like, the emotionality of that entire scene. Yeah. Thank you.